Hi guys, welcome to Little Wicket Railway. I'm Rob and in this video, we're back at the flea market searching for bargains. This is the B2B event and it's at the Three Counties Showground in Malvern. We were here last summer and we picked up a few things for the railway room as well as a few models. People seem to like that video, so I thought I'd come back. Last time, one of the traders said it wasn't the best day for model railway stuff. She said there'd been a lot more in previous uh, events. This time, I think we're in for some treats because there seem to be a lot more people here. So let's go and see whether we can find any bargains. The Malvern Flea Market has both indoor and outdoor areas. When we were here before, we started outdoors, but this time we went straight for the covered areas because this is where we found more railway stuff last time. And it wasn't long before we found Richard Clark's Railway Arna stall. This was packed with collectible stuff from the full-sized railway. There was something for every railway enthusiast covering British Rail, the Big Four, and even going back into the pre-grouping era. He's got lamps, shed plates, finials, paycheck tokens, signals, books, old documents, whistles, you name it, he probably had it on his stool. It was here we also got our first taste of model railways in the form of these vintage O-gauge items, but I was after newer double O scale stuff, so we continued on our way hunting for models and it wasn't long before we found some. This stall had loads of Airfix, Lima and Hornby double O stuff dating from the mid 70s to the early 2000s. I wasn't too interested in the locos, but the tubs under the table caught my eye. I spent quite a bit of time sorting through them and I'll show you what I found later. Focus toys were there again, so we stopped off at their stall and there were a few other sellers with bits and pieces on offer. After exhausting the indoor area, we headed out into the showground with its beautiful views of the Malvern Hills to see what else we could find. One of the first things we came across was this mighty model of 2700 and despite looking like it needed a fair amount of work, it still had the price tag of £1000 which was a little bit out of my price range so we quickly moved on. And we came across a couple of sellers who had double O gauge stuff, again mostly Lima and Triang with a few bits of Hornby, Wren and Fleischmann mixed in there too. I know we've been moving pretty quickly, but let me know in the comments below if anything has caught your eye and how much you would have paid for it. We've just finished at the market and it is a lot busier than the last time we came. More traders and more stuff to be found. I found a guy called Richard who specializes in Railway Arna and his stall was really good. So I've got something from there. I've picked up a couple of other bits for the railway room and also some stuff for the model railway as well. So let's get back. I'll show you what I've bought and we'll find out whether it was a bargain. And we're back in the train room. Before I show you what I got this time, let me remind you of my favorite purchase from the last visit to the market, the creepy drinks train. Still an incredible find. And if you want to see the video from that first trip, then I'll put a link up here. Sadly, I couldn't find anything as odd as that this time, but I do have a variety of items to show you, including some models. This first item is a framed picture of a Midland Railways compound number 1000. It's not a painting, it's a print, and it says it was from Railway Magazine. Okay, it's a fairly nice drawing of the loco and some technical details down below, but I don't think it's anything special, and I clearly didn't look at the frame very closely because it's not in great condition, we've got some marks and it's a bit chipped. How much did I pay for it, you ask? Well, I'm embarrassed to say 25 pounds. Uh, was it a bargain? Unless you know something I don't, I'm 99% sure this wasn't a good deal. You can get brand new, nicely framed prints for less than that. I'm really struggling to explain why I bought it. I wanted something to decorate the train room with. Uh, I've got a soft spot for this loco because the Hornby Railroad version was one of my first models and it was my first review on YouTube. So I think that's why I wanted this. Also, there was a bit of a sob story from the seller, but looking at it now, I think this is probably worth about 10 pounds. Maybe I can tidy it up a bit before I put it up there on the shelf, but I think it will be forever up there mocking me for spending that much on it. Anyway, swiftly moving on to something from the full-sized railway. I'm a fan of the LMS and I took a liking to this lamp from Richard Clark's Railway Arna store. It's described as a general purpose lamp and it's in good condition with all the glass intact. 
We've got the LMS branding on the top and this lovely shiny LMS logo on the paraffin burner inside, which I think Richard said was the original burner. It's just a lovely little piece of railway history from the LMS. The tag says 70 pounds. I got it for 60, but was that a good deal? Well, probably not. It's hard to say for sure because I couldn't find an exact match, but based on similar items, it looks like I might have paid slightly over the odds. There are versions of this around for about £40, but they don't have this style of LMS plaque on the burner, which I really like. So I might have paid slightly too much, but I'm pretty happy with it, and I love my little LMS lamp. I love the lamp. Do you really love the lamp, or are you just saying it because you saw it? I love lamp. I love lamp. Right, on to the models. So remember those two boxes that were under the table and were stuffed full of coaches and wagons? Well, I spent ages sorting through those. They were all really dirty and most of them were broken or missing parts. But in these boxes were some very nice wagons. I've cleaned these up a bit, but we've got a couple of fine fish vans, a GWR brake van, a couple of 20 ton BR brake vans, an LMS cattle wagon, two Pugh & Co wagons, an Arnold Sands wagon, an Airfix coal merchants wagon, and a large mineral wagon. They're all complete with their underframes and buffers intact. Apart from one, they all have coupling hooks, and most of them have metal wheels, which is a bonus. Okay, they're not boxed and some of them are a bit dated, but I got 11 wagons for £35. That works out at £3.18 per wagon, which I think makes these an indisputable bargain given the inflated second-hand market that exists at the moment. If these were on eBay, I think they'd be listed for between £4 and £8 each, plus postage, and I think that the Pew & Co wagons were Hornby Special Editions, which might make them slightly more valuable. But yeah, overall, I'm pretty happy with those. And finally, I wanted to bring home a locomotive and that's what I've done. Meet the newest addition to the fleet, 73202 or Stewart's Lane, 1960 to 1985 to give it its full title. This is a Hornby Loco that came out in 2008, so it's relatively new. It's got a five pole motor, it's eight pin DCC ready, and it's got NEM couplings. I've quickly looked inside and I didn't get lucky this time, there's no decoder already in there, but I've tested her on analog and she does run very well. The model is in the intercity executive livery, which I think is really nice, and I believe these were used for the Gatwick Express trains. In terms of detail, not a lot to talk about. I think this might be an old Lima tooling, although I was surprised to find a version of this in GB Rail Freight livery, still in the main range on the Hornby website. The model came boxed with instructions and I paid 50 pounds for it, but was that a bargain? Well, it's hard to say for sure because I couldn't find many of these available for sale. The sticker on the box says 5750, which is a good starting indicator. Hatton's had one listed for just over £70 at some point, and Wren Model Railways had one listed for just under £80. There's one on eBay now listed at 55 and the GB Rail Freight liveried version currently available from Hornby is £85. Given that this is boxed and in mint condition, I'm going to say that that's a bargain. 1960s electro diesels aren't really my thing and I was contemplating selling it, but the more I get it out to look at it, the more I like it, so this might be sticking around a bit longer. And that's everything, a bit of variety there and a couple of bargains. Not sure what I was thinking with the picture, I'm hoping someone will comment below letting me know that it's super rare and valuable, but I'm not holding my breath. If you want to go to the Malvern B2B events flea market, then it's most months at the Three County Showground in Malvern. I'll put a link to their website in the description below. It's five pound entrance fee, but there are loads of stalls selling all sorts of things, and it goes on for most of the day. And this isn't like a car boot sale. Most people there are professional dealers. So there's a lot of quality stuff to be found. Be sure to take cash if you plan on buying anything, as most places don't take card, and the cash machines there will charge you. Also, try and pick a day with nice weather because most of it's outside and it does have some lovely views. If you enjoyed this video, then please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. I would very much appreciate it. I also have YouTube memberships and a Patreon account if you'd like to support the channel that way in return for some perks. Thank you very much to everyone that's already signed up. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I will hopefully see you again soon.